All right, folks, I thought you'd find this interesting. We are at, I don't even know now, let's see, uh, Friday would have been day seven, or yeah, day seven, Saturday eight, Sunday nine, and today is Tuesday, so it's day 11. And we are continuing to see our thermophilic uh, period decline. We're right in at 151 degrees in the hottest spot I can find in this pile. Pretty much the same thing in this pile. They're following the same uh, profile, still steaming. So here we are, a little less than a week and a half in, and we could still be using this residual heat in something like a greenhouse. But there's something really interesting going on here. And a lot of folks are really skeptical about my claim that these old wood chips would become a fungal inoculant when the thermal cycle ended. Because, well, all of the... Uh, all of these uh, you know, spores for fungi are gonna get burned up in the thermal cycle. But again, they're not, and they're not because there's about two inches of wood chips with no added nitrogen sitting on the surface. And they might get warm from the bottom, but they're not gonna break down in a thermophilic cycle. And proving that right here, these are mushrooms I definitely would not eat. But you can see we have our first mushroom flush what is it, 11 days into the cycle, we still have a core temperature over 150 degrees, and there's your first mushrooms. And I'm telling you, over the next couple of weeks, they will explode and run through their cycle. They're not very long-lived, these guys, whatever they are. I, like I said, I wouldn't eat that. I wouldn't take it for recreational purposes. Uh, I have no idea what species of mushroom that is. It's a variety of what they call LBMs. And pretty much don't eat LBMs is uh, what most people that collect mushrooms will tell you. Little brown mushrooms. It means I don't know what it is and it's little and it's brownish. That's more like a grayish, but I'm not eating it. No, I was going to say no mushrooms. Yeah, no mushrooms yet here. But I will not be surprised when I see them pop up very shortly. And the system just continues. And so again, we built these two bioreactors 11 days ago. Uh, they're going to run a thermophilic cycle for two to three weeks and we've already hit the peak and we've begun the decline So we've dropped by about 10 degrees from our top temperature of around a little bit more than 10 because we got up into like 163 at our highest That's just fine. You can go all the way to 165 without getting your drawers in a knot and uh, I did one thing a little bit differently and I think I'm gonna try this for this uh, this batch Normally what I do, I set these sprinklers up like this. I want sitting there waiting for a hose to come to it. And I've also determined <clears throat> that kind of my ideal amount of water per batch for the climate I'm in, where things dry out really, really quickly, even in the winter, is about two gallons versus the one gallon that uh, Dr. Johnson is using in his systems. When I use two gallons a day, I don't see any leaching, leachate coming out the bottom or anything like that. Uh, I just watered it. You can see there's a little bit of dampness on the outer edge, but nothing is over wet. And I have an asset that a lot of people don't, and that is I have this pond back here. Now, for those that have never seen this pond before, this is not its glory. This is its winter season. So you can see almost all of the water plants have been knocked back. And you see that little green mat there. That is a Zola beginning to take over since the water hyacinth is is dying back from the cold. Well, I use this to grow a lot of things, but one of the biggest things I grow in it is aquatic vegetation. And I feed that vegetation to my birds. You can see some of the water hyacinth stalks and all right in there. And then this inoculates my compost. Well, I also have a two gallon watering can and it takes not very long at all to water those two systems from my pond water. So that's what I'm doing because I know there's all sorts of microbiology going on in there. Because in addition to everything the system does, uh, every couple days there's a stock tank sitting right behind that tree up on a little hill that we built. We call it Duck Mountain. I fill that up for those guys. I let them poop in there. And I dump duck effluent into here, which is what feeds all of the growth in all of these tanks across the whole system and grows this aquatic vegetation. Uh, so now we have a complete loop. The animals are foraging, they're picking up microbiology, they have uh, biochar in the coop and in their, in, 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 the, uh, in their feed. They're being fed aquatic vegetation, their waste is going back through the system. 
and then that's growing all of these plants and then that water is being used and for those of you that are like oh my god duck affluent look how clear it is that's the bottom you're looking at that's roughly two foot deep it's one of the deepest spots in the system so the water is if there was a jar around here i'd get some out but the water is i'll put my hand in i ain't afraid absolutely clear because these plants do such a good job now this time of year and again it's not just those plants there's plants in every one of these tanks so there's there's four tanks in this cascade right here that all have various levels of biological filtration going on there's an ebb and flow system 150 gallons of ebb and flow in here and there's another three tanks that are on their own return cycle that's the water coming out there and then there's water coming out of that pipe there so now i'm using this infused water to inoculate the compost and we'll see if that has a different effect i'm not going to say i'm going to use it the entire time there is a place for automation off of a well but right now i figured why not so until i get tired of doing it uh, i'm going to keep trying that and we'll see how things go i'm also probably in january going to build one or two more of these uh far more fungally dominant a lot more wood chips are going to be brought in uh, we'll clean that coop out again and I'll probably do a small class. So if you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, keep an eye out around, you know, after the first of the year, I'll be picking like probably two weekends. Uh, it'll be one weekend we'll actually do it. You'll want to have to be flexible for it. Here's why. We have weather that goes ape shit here. And sometimes in January, it's gorgeous like it is today. Sometimes in January, it's an ice storm. There's no reason to do this in an ice storm. So we'll probably pick like, like they do in baseball where you have a game day and a rain day. We'll probably do that like two weekends apart or maybe a, a week in between as a backup and ask for students to have flexibility. And that's going to be part of the course that I'm building right now on how to do all this. Uh, we're building a, a bioreactor composting masterclass. It's not going to be expensive. It's probably be about 35 bucks. All online. Really, really cool. That will be coming around, you know, January of this year is what we're thinking. It might come earlier but we'll probably wait until we get some footage with the students here as well. Uh, that'll add to a lot of uh, Q&A material and things like that for you. But if you do have any questions, I do not believe in the secreting of knowledge, even though I'm building a course. You ask a question, you will get an answer. Do that in the comments below. If you like this content, like, subscribe, share with your friends. Take care, guys.